So hi guys, welcome again to another edition of Football Family Fuse, or should I say, one. The reason why I'm here say one because I'm doing a different type of video today. Um, I'm going back to my Jamaican roots. Yeah, my parents are from Jamaica. I go to Jamaica quite often. And so I wanted to do a little fun one, which is a Jamaica 11. Um, I am grateful to all my subscribers, but I noticed that I'm looking at my statistics, my all my analytics, that Jamaica come up as the sixth highest for amount of views for the, in the last 28 days. So quite a few people from Jamaica subscribing and watching the channel. So yeah, I just wanted to see whether I could just do a little Jamaica 11, but fear not all the other um, countries who watch this, because I notice that I get a lot of support from West Africa as well, Nigeria and Ghana in particular. So I'll be doing my African 11 as well. I'll also be doing a Scandinavian 11, I'll try to do a South American 11, an England 11. So I want to get all the countries, um, touch all bases with all the countries where we've had players who've played for Chelsea, where it's possible to do an 11. I think I could do a Spanish 11 as well. Um, so before I get into the Jamaican 11, you guys know what to do. Let's hit that like button and the bell notification so you'll be notified every time we make a video. So straight in, so here are the rules. So first of all, you have to have, uh, be qualified to be play, to play for Jamaica. And um, so once you're qualified, to, so your parents, either you're born in Jamaica or your parents have been born in Jamaica. So that's the first criteria. And the second criteria is that you had to be on Chelsea's books at some point. You didn't necessarily have to be play first team football because there's, if I it was that if that was the case, then I could, wouldn't be able to uh, get an eleven. But if you're on the books and played at youth international, at the youth level or development level, then uh, you can make the team. So what I'll be doing is anyone who's made a first team appearance for Chelsea, um, I want to put them into the eleven first of all. So anyone who hasn't, I just fill it up with space spaces for players who haven't actually made a debut for Chelsea but have been on Chelsea's books. Hey, that's clear. Right, um, so the foot in goal, a goal has to be Jamal Blackman. Jamal Blackman um, is still on Chelsea's books. He's currently on loan at the moment. He's had a few loan spells. He's been on the bench a few times and he was actually part of our squad that won the um, 2012 Champions League. Um, he's still a decent goalkeeper. Uh, so we'll see how he progresses. So he may come back one day and don the number one shirt. Um, probably come on a substitute or play in a friendly, I don't know. But um, Blackman has to be the goalkeeper because he's the only Jamaican goalkeeper we have on our books. So at right back, it's gonna be um, Frank Sinclair. Frank Sinclair was one of the players when Jamaica qualified for the World Cup in 1998 they raided England for a lot of players who were eligible to play for Jamaica and Frank Sinclair was one of the players they got alongside the likes of Robbie Earl, Dion Burton and, and others. And so I was privileged enough to go to the 1998 World Cup. I drove over to France um, and I went to Jamaica's first game against uh, Croatia. And that was at, in Lille. And it was a fantastic experience. Um, one nil down. And then Robbie Earl scored just before the, the half, the, the, the first, um, the, just at the end of the half, uh, first half. So we went in 1-1 and the crowd were just going mad. But then my namesake, Dion Burton, because my surname's Burton, he missed a header just after half time. And I'm still adamant to this day, had the header gone in, then Chelsea, or Chelsea, then Jamaica would have pulled off a big shock and beaten Croatia. But um, it wasn't to be, missed that chance, and then Croatia scored two goals in the middle of the half, I think. I think Davos Sukar, one of the all-time great strikers, was playing for them, and he scored 
one of their goals that day. So it ended in disappointment. Uh, got fresh 6-0 by Argentina in the next game. And I think we finished on a high by beating Japan three goals to nil. So Frank Sinclair featured in that game. I've had the pleasure of meeting Frank Sinclair on a couple, couple of occasions. And he also is a reporter now on Chelsea TV. Um, at a left back, I'm going to have Clive Wilson. Clive Wilson, I think is Jamaican. Let's correct me if I'm wrong, somebody. But um, when in the, he was around, he came, he got us, we was playing under Bobby Campbell when we got promoted um, in the 89 season and we brought him from Manchester City. And I'm sure that I read somewhere that he was of Jamaican heritage. I was trying to do some research just to back that up, but I couldn't find anything. But I'm sure that he, yeah, he's definitely from Jamaica. So he comes at left back. He was a very skillful left back. Um, and uh, I had some good moments watching him at Chelsea when I was a kid. When I was a kid, sorry. Um, definitely from Jamaica or of Jamaican parentage is Paul Elliott, because he was actually nicknamed Mr. Jamaica when he was playing for us. He was, um, I believe, our first black captain as well. Um, his career was tragically cut short because of a horrendous tackle on him by Dean Saunders. I've never forgiven Dean Saunders for that tackle up to this day because um, Paul Elliott was a superb player, excellent leader. That's why they made him captain, great organiser at the back. And um, had he not had that injury, then I think he could have gone on to greater things at Chelsea. We could have even won a few things earlier with him in the team. Um, so he will be um, my centre back and my captain actually. Uh, Michael Hector is uh, the other centre off by default. Again, another one who we had that funny spell where we were going out and buying a lot of players just to loan them out. We bought um, Diddy Job Body at the same time, and then we picked him up on deadline day. That's one of the frustrating windows that we had when we didn't really buy anyone of note and we were just sort of um, scrapping around on the last day of the window picking up these players that um, I don't say well, I've, I've heard of him I couldn't say that no one's heard of but you, you would not expect Chelsea to, to buy but he's, he's a good player uh, probably not a Chelsea level player but um, He's a friend of mine supports Sheffield Wednesday and he was raving about him and he wished that his club could have bought him for um, to play for them. I think he's now playing his trade at Fulham, but at the time he was at Chelsea. I think he was in the Jamaica team that got to the final a couple of years ago in the CONCACAF and lost to the United States. So yeah, he gets in that centre back. Um, Midfield, Izzy Brown gets in. Izzy Brown, we bought from West Bromwich Albion. He's played once for Chelsea. And funny enough, it was against West Bromwich Albion. I think we'd lost 3 0, but we'd really won sewn up the league that year. And that's when we kind of give youngsters an opportunity. Izzy Brown got his opportunity in that particular match. Um, hasn't played for us since, and he's been on a few loan spells, but he is eligible to play for Jamaica as well. So that's why he gets in. Ruben Loftus Cheek. Big name player, obviously plays for England, but he's eligible to play for Jamaica as well because of um, Jamaican parentage or grandparentage. Um, we all know about the Ruben Loftus Cheek and what he can offer. Hopefully, next season he comes back, he's injury free, and he has a standout season. He deserves a standout season. The only thing what's kept him from being a Chelsea superstar at the moment is the fact that he's been his, his career has been blighted with injuries. Last season, we saw bits of what he can do in his link-up play with Hazard was like second to none. So um, I'm just really, really, really keep my fingers crossed that he will come back and this Achilles heel injury that he had um, last season doesn't affect the way that he, his career progresses. So, um, Ruby, yeah, he gets in that midfield. And the other midfield is uh, Casey Palmer. And forgive me, Casey Palmer, if, again, I was trying to do my research, quite hard doing research to find out all your the parentage, but he's he named his favourite holiday destination as Jamaica, maybe. And I've that's one of my favourite holiday destinations because I've gone there on so many occasions. So I'm just thinking that he's gone there quite a few times, maybe because his family are from there. So I'm just hoping that I've got that one right. So 
someone comment below or correct me if I'm wrong on that one. Um, Dan uh, Sinclair, Scott Sinclair, he's going to be my, so it's going to be a 4 3 3 formation, so he's going to be one of the front three. And the uh, story has it that um, John Barnes tried to convince Scott Sinclair to uh, play for Jamaica, but he turned him down. Um, Scott Sinclair was a player we bought from Bristol Rovers. Um, I really rated him, I thought he was an exciting young winner, but at the time that we bought him, we had some really good players in the team and he found it hard to break through. Um, he went on loan a couple of places, Plymouth and some other places, but he really made his name for Celtic. We had two or three outstanding seasons for, for them. So, um, yeah, so Scotty comes in as one of my strikers. And then the other one, Leon Knight. Uh, Leon Knight, eligible to play for, for uh, Jamaica through his mother, I believe. Um, Leon Knight was one of the most frustrating players I've witnessed at Chelsea. Fantastic youth team player, bags and bags of potential. People were likening him to Michael Owen. Michael Owen had just broken through at Liverpool at the time, and people were saying that he was a similar type of player. But football is not only about ability, it's also about personality, character, and Leon Knight was let down because he had a bad attitude and uh, he didn't fulfil his potential at Chelsea. Actually, every club that Leon Knight went to, he didn't fulfil that promise. And he's probably better known for his uh, Twitter uh, spate that he had with uh, Jamie O'Hara over Jamie O'Hara's wife. You can Google that if you don't know anything about it. Um, and he showed a lot of disrespect in that Twitter ding dong that he was ever with Jamie O'Hara. So, uh, wasted, wasted talent. Um, probably wouldn't have got him if I couldn't, if I could find another striker, but um, he gets in because he's the only striker who was available at the time. Um, and finally, yeah, Daniel Sturridge. Daniel Sturridge uh, loves his, you can see how uh, he does his little Jamaican dances after he scores a goal. Um, and he's, he was very proud of his Jamaican roots as well. Um, I felt sorry for him when he was at Chelsea actually because I thought he was a fantastic player, another one with bags of ability, natural ability, a fantastic striker. But I thought the crowd got on his back all the time and they didn't give him a fair crack like they gave to Torres. Because I remember I was at a game, we were playing Reddy actually, and um, I was sitting next to this guy. Sturridge misses a chance, this guy's on his back. A few minutes later, Torres misses an easier chance. And what does this guy do? Oh, unlucky Torres, unlucky. Better luck next time. So, um, the, that's what you see, because we've got a, one was a 50 million pound player. They, they had a lot of time for him, even when he was failing. The other one we got for seven million pounds. Um, I don't want to say it's a race thing. I hope it wasn't a race thing, but it could have been. But uh, this is the way that they did treat him. Everyone kind of got on his back and I thought, yeah, he was a bit injury prone at times, but I still think that he could have, um, if we, he stayed with us, he could have got a lot more joy um, in the future. Uh, but he did leave us with a Champions League medal, so uh, all wasn't lost for him. And um, obviously we know that he went on to play for Liverpool uh, and he went over to Turkey until it went all south for him because of there some gambling issues that he had over there. So there you have it guys, that is my Jamaica 11, so big up all the Jamaica comes. And let's hope uh, that, uh, what, anyone else have I missed guys? Anyone you think of or you know about who is qualified to play for Jamaica? Um, I did a quite a bit of research to find players, but these are the only 11 I could come out with. But if you know any more, just put it in the comment section below. And credit actually to, um, Nigel James, who's the father of Rhys James, because in my research, I even went, I said, I reached out to him on Twitter and to ask him what his roots were, but I think it was um, Dominica and Antigua, I believe, or something like that. But he did respond to me, so thank you, Nigel James, for responding to me, because not a lot of times when you try and reach out to people, do they 
respond, but this guy, is, but he did respond. Not only did he respond, he actually followed me as well. So um, thanks for that. Um, so guys, next time I'll try and do uh, African 11. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget, um, keep safe, wash your hands, keep that blue flag flying eye. Until, until the next time, Irie.